Hi everyone, today we are on chapter 19 of Lemons by Melissa Savage. Um, it is titled Assistant Detective Extraordinaire. Uh, I certainly do miss being there with you because this book certainly has some excellent vocabulary. Um, last chapter we learned about a mid-tarsal ridge which is um, about a footprint where they found some big foot footprints. Remember the mid-tarsal ridge is in a primate whereas a human has a stiff arch. A primate has a flexible or arch where it can help them uh, get through the jungles and stuff. So they found big foot footprints. Charlie, uh, Lemon's grandfather, Tobin and Lemonade. Let's see what happens in chapter 19. With Expedition, Bluff Creek, a stunning success, thanks to my amazing investigative skills, Tobin and I helped Charlie set up a big display <coughs> in a glass case near the register at Bigfoot Souvenirs and More that Monday morning. While Charlie works on setting up footprints, we're lying on our stomachs near the fireplace, coloring a giant map of Bluff Creek for the backdrop. The bell on the door rings. I don't really pay attention until I hear this weird noise come out of Tobin's throat. Good morning, boys, Charlie calls from behind the counter. Did you come to hear about our fantastic discovery out at Bluff Creek? Tobin ducks his head lower, and he keeps coloring without saying anything. He's got the greens, the grass in the forest, and I've got the yellows and the blues, the sun in the sky. Yeah, says one of the boys. We heard about the footprints. Well, everyone has. It's all anybody's been talking about, really. There are two of them, probably about the same age as us. One with the buzz cut that set Anna Sticks t-shirt, and the other one with long bangs that he keeps swinging out of his eyes. The phone rings in the back room. I'll just be a minute, Charlie tells them. Maybe Talbot and Lynn can start telling you the story. Charlie steps around the corner and into the back room. Bigfoot souvenirs and more. How can I help you today? We hear him say into the receiver of the phone. The boys shuffle in our direction, stopping to where we are coloring. They look down at us with silly smirks on their faces. The one with the buzz cut puts a Nike toe right in the middle of my son. You're on my son, I inform him. He doesn't smut, budge, still smirking down at me. So what's your story? He jets a chin in my direction. Tobin makes that noise in the back of his throat again. Don't you have any manners? I asked the boy with the buzz cut, picking up his toe and moving it myself. What? He asks. Manners? I say again, much slower this time. You're generally supposed to acknowledge somebody with some kind of question of greeting before bombarding them with rude questions. The boys look at each other and laugh. <clears throat> I know that laugh. I've heard it before. Tobin makes another weird sound, and then he starts scribbling harder. I just know he's going to shred the paper straight through and ruin the whole thing. <sighs> oh, excuse me, Miss Fancy Pants. How are you doing this fine morning? And by the way, what's your story? Buzzcat asks while he curtsies, holding out a pretend skirt. Bangs laughs at him, and he swirls his head right. Better, but it still needs work, I tell him, leaning back and examining my swirling crods. She must be Tobin's new girlfriend, Bangs says. Wrong, Tobin snaps his head up. I sigh, set my crayons down. And I look up at the two new boys. I just moved here from San Francisco, I say. Not that it's any of your business. They laugh again. Ha, huh, Buzzcut says. Seems to me like you're spending a lot of time with Tobin here. In my book, that makes you his girlfriend. She is not, Tobin shouts again. In your book, I say. So that's just the one then? The only book you've ever read? Singular? I smile. He glares at me. I know that he knows that I know that it was them on the other end of the phone, that green phone, that day. Do you kiss her? 
while you sit on Charlie's porch swing, Tobin? Bangs asks, making kissing noises. <coughs> Tobin pops up from the floor and he glares at them with his fists clenched at his sides. Thumbs sticking straight up. Yeah, well, well, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, yes, you don't know. Tobin finally spits out. Brutal. I wonder if he knows that as far as comebacks go, he's just the worst. He needs a serious lesson. Lucky for him, he's got me. Listen here. Why don't you and moron number two go and... Kids, Charlie comes out of the back room. Is there a problem? Uh, uh, no, sir, Buzzcut shoots an award-winning smile in the, his direction. Just ignore them, Tobin, I whisper, grabbing the midnight blue from the box. Who cares what they think anyway? Charlie is by Tobin's side now. Problem, he asks again, putting a hand on Tobin's shoulder. Oh, no, not at all, sir, Buzzcut's lips stretch wide over his teeth. We just came in to see what all the talk is around town about. We heard that you cast those pr prints and all. Isn't that right, sir? You boys come on over this way and I'll show you what we found, Charlie smiles as he guides the two doofuses to the glass case. He looks over his shoulder at Tobin and he winks. Tobin gets back down on the floor and he starts coloring again, coloring the green furiously on the paper. Hey, I grab his arm. Stop. What are you going to do? What are you doing? You're going to rip right through it. Oh, they make me so mad. He hisses at me. Then he stops coloring. He takes his glasses off and he wipes at his eyes. <sighs> Those two? I ask, pointing up at the counter. Don't give them the time of day. They just want to get a rise out of you. If you show them you don't care, they'll just leave you alone. But you don't understand, he tells me. Well, one thing I can say for sure is that you're absolutely the worst at comebacks in the history of the world. I mean, you're really, really bad. Like El Stingarino. He smiles then, and he even laughs a little. I just get so flustered that I can't get the words in my head to come out of my mouth. Well, good thing you have me to coach you. I'll give you some real good ringers, too. I'm the comeback queen in the city. You do that? Sure, I shrug. You know, they're really just jealous, right? No, he shakes his head. That's not it. Oh, yeah. Of what? What could they be jealous of? Well, not everybody makes founder and president of their own company. By the fifth grade, I say. Tobin thinks really hard about that. Then I see the corners of his mouth curl up even into a smile. That's it for chapter 19. I hope y'all have a great day.